Welcome to the Alien Probe Podcast. It is March 12th, 2023. Joined today by Deb. How's it going? It's going great. How was the week, Deb? It was a busy week. Yeah? Eh, What were you up to? A lot of rain, a lot of walking a dog in the rain, you know, my usual life. Your usual life? Dog's there. We can't see the dog in the picture. Let's see. Get him in the picture. There's the dog. Here, we'll, we'll leave the dog in the picture for now. You don't need to see me. Anyway... So, uh, that's Max. So, anyway, um, we're going to talk uh, this week. We I went to a MUFON meeting. I, I think it's pronounced MUFON. I've been doing MUFON. Oh. I think because it's UFO, it's MUFON. Nobody corrected me, even though... But did they say uh, MUFON? Yeah, I think okay. it's MUFON. I think I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. I'm going to have to get a clarification. But the meeting was good. Um, a lot of like-minded people. I brought uh, um, Corey and Jeff, as you know. And... Um, they joined up, wanted to see what it's all about. Corey's going to join uh, join up. Aww. And uh, so um, I believe he's going to join up, he was talking about. So, um, yeah, it was, you know, people, they talked about various subjects, most of which we've talked about on the show from one time to another. I really didn't um, actively participate too much. I introduced myself and who I was. And a couple of people have listened to the show, which I appreciate you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, it's... Uh, Try to kind of put it out there to see, to show you, you know, what what the hit. We do a lot of the history of the UFOs and things, um, extraterrestrials. So uh, this week we're going to start our journey to uh, the secret journey to planet Serpo. Ben, this is part one. You and I are going to do forty five parts. I don't know how many. Forty five parts. Oh God! I'm going to be old by the time okay. this is done. <laughs> Damn. So, um, Planet Serpo, we're getting it from uh, the book. There's the book. Here's the book. It's glowing. Okay. If you need to get any additional, you can freeze that to see. Um, if you need to, this is what we're taking. This, so, so, you know, you know, this is where we're taking the information of and from. And there's also uh, Serpo.org. There's a oh. website. And it tells the whole story. We'll be pulling information from that as well. So um, we're going to be doing. There's a pre. In the, there's a prelude in the book that discusses things from way back when, the 1800s kind of thing, and um, all the way through World War II. Um, they talk about um, the um, Germany, German Nazi um, uh, UFOs. Their flying saucers. That they uh, they had developed. I mean, I haven't seen proof that I can put my hands on the dog. The dog's design. he's gonna bite himself now. <laughs> take the dog. Take the dog out. Of the would take the dog out of the picture. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So anyway, we're gonna start uh, in 1965. There is uh, this isn't the beginning, but we're gonna. This is what it's about. Uh, Twelve Air Force astronauts. Um, Ten men and two women went to the planet Serpo. So, uh, but Did, didn't we discuss yesterday why <laughs> why it's not a good idea to send ten men and only two women? <laughs> Should be five and five. <laughs> um, well, they're not. There's a con. I don't know if there's a controversy. There's a discrepancy. They there's two stories. One of them is that it was all men, and the other one is there was two women. I I can see a little bit of a problem. Well, were they? thinking they were going to populate it or they're just exploring it they're just going there to it's an information exchange so they're going to serpo and then they're just all they really want to do is i think they're just looking at their um they're not necessarily their technology but their way of life on another planet so they were going to mingle with the natives yeah they're going to stay there that that's going to be started that's going to be part of our 45 part series thank god i'm so curious i don't know honestly i don't think it'll be 45 (laughs) i'm so curious but but we're going to talk about uh well their journey um i don't know if we have the because we don't have names everybody they are they have numbers okay like 309 and 375 and that kind of thing so and that you know, so we don't have, there's a lot of it, there's some information that's classified that we're not able to get our hands on. And, um. Well, that'll be part 46. That'll be part 46. When they, when they let us have that information. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that I don't know about the selection process and who they are, but they're, um, Serpo's in the Zeta Reticuli system. And that's, you hear that throughout, 
yeah, I know you've probably even heard it mentioned mm -hmm. on, you know, science fiction. Um, yeah. Zeta Reticulize were uh, Betty and, or Betty Hill under hypnosis actually uh, drew the Zeta Reticulize system. And I don't think she had any astrophysics background. You so, sure? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to say no, but um, I'm pretty sure yeah. she didn't. So under hypnosis, she actually drew the system and they, they, they couldn't quite figure out how um, she knew yeah, that would be what strange. it was, you know, because, you know, after the abduction. And uh, so I don't know. It was really kind of a bizarre story. Anyway, she you know, recounted that under hypnosis. Um, we're going to review Serpo's story in history. So, um, uh, you know, history, and you kind of go down a rabbit hole as I went through this. And I hear, you know, as when you're looking at stories, kind of like when you're looking, you're clicking one thing and then you mm -hmm. click the other and then you click the other. And yeah. there's several stories that are re more or less related to what led up to us um, you know, getting the information that we needed and getting uh, in touch with um, the Serpo beings. The beings. The beings. So um, in 1941, before Ro Roswell's in 47, it was in July of okay. 47, or there was some discrepancy in that. It's June in 47, I think. Um, Richard Doty corrected. He says it was late June. It wasn't oh, July. Well, of course. So... Um, that they found the debris field. So, but before that in 41, there were two crashes. One was in, uh, in the, I'm um, in the Pacific ocean, west of San Diego, they had a recovery. And then there was one in St. Augustine, uh, Southwest of Socorro, New Mexico. I thought that was St. Augustine. But no, it wasn't. not Florida. No, it was not Florida. So, um, you know, there was in, there was uh, three ETs involved, and uh, one ET survived. And this, um, the ETs and the craft went to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. This is is, and I'm stating this as though it's fact, but this I'm just relaying the story as right. it's told in the book. So right. I probably should say I'm not Allegedly. the one. Alleged. <laughs> Allegedly, I'm not the one that is the, the witness. I wasn't there. But this is an argument I always had with Bill is that I, I always had maintained that Wright Patterson is really the holy grail of where we have that warehouse, like the Indiana Jones movie, where they had all the, yeah. you know, the weird, artifacts. you know, warehouse, and then they had the artifacts in there. I think that's Wright Patterson, but, yeah. you know, that's it. We don't know. <laughs> so, we, will, we will not know. We now know that the military had at least this experience in retrieving, you know. Uh, UFO retrieval. Mm -hmm. Gotta look at the dog. He's looking out the window. He's going What's to up? bark at some point in time. <laughs> just, just so you know. Everybody, yeah, everybody enjoys the dog. Here he is. There he's he is. he's adorable. Mac. Okay, put, put the dog away. God. <laughs> it's my dog. Nobody wants to look at the dog. Okay, so I know I'm going to get a comment about the dog. Mm -hmm. So uh, we know that the, you know, this, the ridiculous balloon story of, you know, mm -hmm. how bad. Um, it really was. So um, in Roswell, what the the theory is, and well, it, it's actually fact that the UFO sightings um, are over many things: nuclear power plants and nuclear bomb um, storage facilities. Um, Roswell was a, a B twenty nine uh, squadron, a nuclear armed B twenty nine squadron. So. It's surmised that the reason um, that they were checking it out is that, you know, they, there's something to do with the nuclear weapons. I mean, there's a lot related sightings to the, to the you know, the well, nuclear. Well, isn't that naturally where you would observe yeah. is to your enemy, if you think they're your enemy, is you're going to look at their, their power. You're going to look at their weapons. I mean... Do you it's think happening now. Do you think they're there to do you think they're there to here to destroy us? Do you think they're our enemies? Well, maybe they don't want to be our enemies, but you're still if you're going to go to another place if you have the ability, you're going to see what you're getting into before you actually you know, set foot on it. And maybe they just, you know, want to study or you know, study what we do and that's Yeah. That's possible. It's interesting because in the story, and I don't 
it's something that I haven't, you know, as I'm going through it, and I wasn't planning on talking about, but it's there is a briefing with Reagan, which I'm going to quote at, toward the end. It, it, um, the government um, was uh, thinking that these guys are hostile. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, there has been no that I know of or that I haven't read. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, you know, a really fictional, you know, uh, story of, you know, these things coming out. We drilled down into the Archuleta Mesa up and, you know, over, you know, over in New Mexico. And then we dug in and we were digging, you know, this tunnel and then these things came out of the, they were underground and they came out and they attacked us. We see it in special mm-hmm. forces. See, this is the rabbit hole. Yeah. This is the rabbit hole you get into, you know, that they came out and they were attacking. These things just came out and we, and special, special forces was there to fend them off. I don't know how they got there so quickly unless they were right there, but that's another story. Okay. So <laughs> there's going to be a few of these other stories in here. Okay. So there was uh Roswell, I don't, I, I don't know. I've probably mentioned this to you because I mentioned these odd facts. Richard Doty stated that uh, the Roswell crash was two UFOs that actually crashed into each other. Mm-hmm. And um, patience, because we'll figure it. I'll let you know how this ties into <laughs> Serpo. Mm-hmm. Um, they crashed into each other. One crashed in the Roswell area. It didn't cr- actually crash into Ros- Roswell's in the vicinity. And then the other one crashed, I think it was about 20 miles away. And that wasn't found uh, until 1949. When they found that, it had a bunch of decomposing um, extraterrestrials in it. So they re- they retrieved that one. Mm-hmm. So um, they collide. So that's, that, that's kind of one of the things that's come to light for me lately. I, which that's another Richard Doty thing. And... Uh, you know, we always assume that both craft kind kind of crashed in in the vicinity. They just crashed. Mm-hmm. We didn't. Yeah. But um, he actually had seen where the damage kind of um, was related to one another. Did so a little a, accident reconstruction. Yeah, a little accident reconstruction, and mm-hmm. um, and they weren't the typical. They weren't the another thing is they weren't the typical flying saucer style, mm-hmm. um, like the Bob Lazar sport model. Yeah. Um, they were oval shaped mm-hmm. and, uh, I don't know if I would say Tic Tac, like we're getting involved with right now, mm-hmm. but, um, they were definitely a different style than that. So, um, so only the Majestic 12, have you heard of the Majestic 12? MJ 12? I think we've discussed them in the past. Um, MJ 12, it was, uh. A committee of scientists and military leaders and government officials that were formed in 1947, probably right after, I'm assuming, right after the uh, Roswell incident. Um, It was under the direction of then-President Truman. Um, He facilitated the recovery of the... the, uh, the, They facilitated the recovery of the craft and the Mm -hmm. extraterrestrials. And they actually knew more. I mean, this is that plaus- I think this is that plausible deniability thing he put together these guys, and uh, you know, it's um, only they knew. And to this day, this is you know we're not we don't know. It's it has they still have not declassified it to the point where we're opening the warehouse door and we're yeah. trying off the lid and going, <laughs> "There's what's right. where there's what's left of it." We know they were reverse engineered, and there's a story here with, you know, with what went on with that. And, um, you know, on May, uh, so James Forrestal, Forrestal, he was the uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense. He was MJ-12. Mm-hmm. So he, um, he James Forrestal, and he actually had an aircraft carrier named after him, too. He wanted it put out to the public of what happened at Roswell. He wanted the, and the, and the fact, not just Roswell, probably the 41 incidents and anything else. I've, I've, I've heard rumor there all the way back to 1933 and before that we've, you know, got mm-hmm. the, you, you know, we've got these things. Um, in the Serpo book, they also found a, uh, they found a UFO 
unburied a UFO that's been around since the, uh, I think it's the Mesozoic, the Paleozoic era. It's been, okay. they said it was, and it had in it, they got into it and they actually found um, pre-humans and they also found um, dinosaur, uh, you know, they had them in their jars or whatever, studying them, you know, inside this thing. But humans and dinosaurs didn't they, exist yeah, at the same time. Yeah, I know, but, you know. And yet you we don't had know samples. That. You don't know that. Well, that's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story. That's the story. And I'm story. sticking to it. That's what I've heard. That's just, I wasn't there, so I don't know why they said that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of kind of strange. To there's a that. lot. and that That is, but the thing is, we there's a lot of, I know, but wh- wh- what do you base that but they had jars with dinosaurs in them? Not gi- like they were small dinosaurs, like baby dinosaurs. Yeah, like little baby little. dinosaurs <laughs> in a jar. Sorry. No, sorry. No. And small free humans. Uh-huh. Maybe regular free humans. What's You're a not pre-human? buying that. You know, like, Neand- a like a Neanderthal. Yeah. Not pre human, but pre. Or as Joe Rogan says, Neanderthal. Neanderthal. <laughs> Boy, I'm butchering history, but the thing about history that we're learning today is um, a lot of what is in the history books, I shouldn't say a lot of what's in the history books, but many things that are in the history books aren't, because that's what you Because I don't read. think Neanderthals had jars. Well, no, they, they, they the lids. ETs had the jars. <laughs> <laughs> and lids. Because <laughs> Neanderthals, there's no way they could work a mason jar. Did they use that little machine that you have to undo? Yeah, they had to have Because <laughs> yeah, you see them. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and then the, the okay. husband would come out and have to undo the jar okay, for her. Okay, it's in the ship. <laughs> the jar's in the ship. That's what it's, it's like when, with the formaldehyde. Now they probably don't use formaldehyde okay. or whatever. So. All right. So history may not be what we think it is. I think that's more okay. of my point. Uh, okay. Or maybe... It, they were time traveling, and this is where they made their they made several stops throughout history. Okay. Maybe it wasn't there at the same time. So they got the dinosaurs here, the Neanderthals here. Change the dial, put them all up on the same. Press shelf. the start button like we do, and then turn it to the another era, and they okay. go pick up another <coughs> specimen. Okay. And um, <coughs> they figured out where these things were, but they weren't. That ship wasn't from Zeta Reticula. It was okay. from another. They figured out it was from another area. Okay. So anyway, Forrestal, you, you'll enjoy this story that he, so he felt that the American people deserved to know what was going on. Right. Um, he died in May twenty second on May twenty second, mm-hmm. nineteen forty nine. You know, a couple of years, almost two years to the date. Um, the circumstances surround his. He was. He had gone. We don't know. If he, well, he went and they. He was diagnosed as being. I don't want to say insane, but mm-hmm. whatever. Unstable. Unstable. Yeah. Um, he was a little paranoid, and this is what stated. That job would do that to you. Yeah, it might. It might. And he thought people were after him and that kind of thing. But the main point I think of this is that, you know, this is one of the things that we had a habit of doing back in the day. Is that you, know, you can make people act like that by injecting certain drugs in them Uh, and then or just by you know in in putting them in circumstances where they're scared and i mean he had this idea that the world should know about this they forced him to keep it a secret that was probably really rough on him because that means that you're not informing people of something that you think they should know and then of you know a little hit of lsd here and there would yeah yeah Exactly right. So what they did in their ultimate wisdom is they placed him on the 13th floor of the hospital and somehow the window got unlocked and he committed suicide. So that's why windows in hospitals no longer open, huh? He's the reason. <laughs> he started this. He started this. Well, you know, obviously, not obviously, <laughs> I should say obviously, mm-hmm. um, evidently, which is probably a better term, mm-hmm. allegedly. Um, he allegedly... Mm-hmm 
pried the window open. I heard another story that he had like uh, uh, he tied a bed sheet around his neck. It was part of the yeah. the uh, article I had in Serpa. Didn't I? Don't think they pointed out that he had actually put. He tried to hang, really to, to kind of hang himself mm -hmm. by jumping out the window and then that, you know, yeah. do it that way, but it broke. Right. So 13 floors up, they find him on the third floor canopy, you know. Yeah. So um, you've heard the term suicided. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what, that's, that's, that's kind of what the theory, the cons well, I should say mm -hmm. conspiracy theory, but this was a way that we kind of did away with people that we didn't uh, back in the in this time thank god we've gotten past that i hope we have yeah <laughs> yeah okay you know what i'm saying yeah um so yeah so is uh you know that's that's kind of a side a fun side note about the a member of the majestic that's, 12 yeah, that's fun i did a fun fact <laughs> yeah that's, that's a great fun little fact there a fun fact about that so in 62, in comes Colonel Philip J. Corso. Okay. He was tasked with the job of seeding American industry with the objects displaying technology far in advance of anything that we know. So he just dispersed it? Yeah, amongst um, American industry what and kind of uh, things? the things that were found in the Roswell incidents and the Do craft. We have we don't have... We don't have a list of these things? I, a Velcro. I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't have a... I don't have a list. Printed circuits. I don't really have a list of... Uh, that would be... The items that... Um, we were if, just, you'd have to look at 1962 and the things that were... Was that a huge yeah, year for... And, yeah, and it could have been even before that because, um, you know, things like the SR-71 were just slightly ahead of its time. Right. <laughs> Mach 3. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kelly Johnson just came up with that, right? I mean, the design itself was probably ours because we could design mm -hmm. very nice things. But the ability of the uh, material of the, the aircraft to do the things it did and maybe the, the uh, avionics okay. uh, in some manner were affected. My contention is that one of the, one of the theories that I have with people is that... Um, the remnants of the craft because they're probably taken apart dissected mm -hmm. just like the people are the remnants are in not in the government we don't have them we don't have them at wright patterson we had them at one time but they're not there now they're probably at a place maybe lockheed martin mm -hmm. the aerospace company that's um tasked with the task again with uh, the re reverse engineering, you know, it may may or may not have been. We know the Bob Lazar story. We're not going to go that way. But, um, you know, it's, I don't think the government has in the reason that the a private company is, isn't under any obligation to tell the public anything. Right. There's no Freedom of Information Act for Lockheed Martin. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry I keep using that example. That's just one example of probably others but that's my theory that's not a fact of anything i know um i don't want to get off because i accuse somebody or something you know so um yeah i don't know it's but that's my theory because they don't have they don't have to tell you know they don't they can keep it secret and um one huge reason that, that we're not really letting the anti-gravity portion of life out which which really is probably most likely what makes these things fly mm -hmm. is that um, if you can make, you know, for instance, a car fly, I'll just use this example, mm -hmm. uh, use it fly and then use, um, use it for propulsion, a small thing that really never really runs out of energy. You know, it's a machine that enables it to re um, somehow recycle the power. I'm not a scientist, mm -hmm. but, um, do you know what we probably wouldn't need a lot of? Gas, yeah. oil, yeah, yeah, and electricity. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's probably not the most. We're probably protecting the interests of those people mm -hmm. by keeping by because what would it do with the would it somehow affect the economy? Again, and I'm not an economist, yeah. but I mean, if things things let out and the technologies let out 
uh, even though it might be, you know, privileged uh, technology is only privileged for a certain amount of time. Right. You know, after that, it's public, you know, and um, then maybe not everybody's doing it, but, um, you know, it's enough people to make uh, gas and oil become possibly a thing of the past or a thing right. that's not really used as much. We need those classic cars. So, right. I mean, we're going to need enough. So we need some gas stations. We're going to need some gas stations, but it's probably going to, I don't know if that's going to drive the price <laughs> of gas up or down if we don't need it anymore. Right. But, you know, they'll find a way to charge, you know. Um, but anyway, this guy, uh, Colonel Corso, he distributed it and uh, the information we were going to regress a little bit. So where did all this information come from? From Serpo? Who who's knows? Who's mm-hmm. who knows about this? Well, yeah. it's it's through a guy named Victor Martinez, uh, but it's from an anonymous. It's, they call him Mister Anonymous. Okay. Basically, he's you know I don't we don't know who Miss maybe Vic knows who he is. I don't uh-huh. know who he is. There's an anonymous one. I think there's an anonymous two later on that comes in. Mm-hmm. People are as this thing gets out. Um, it's becoming more and more, um, public. I mean, the story, mm-hmm. you know, but it's a story. I mean, it's science, you know, science fiction is written every day. So, you know, it's like, but this is the most compelling story and such a really nice tie in. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the beginning was, you know, way back when, and I'm not sure even what the, I read the beginning of the book. And when I read the beginning of the book, I wasn't sure what the tie-in was of ancient times, you know, being like the 1800s. Mm-hmm. And we had a guy from Germany that went to Japan who got involved in Blue Dragon, Yellow Dragon, and came to Germany. They tried to take over. They didn't try to take over. They tried to get a guy that they could control so that they, world domination, you know, would what else, what else could it be? It's always it's um, and then the guy they tried to control was Hitler, which you know he was okay in the beginning, but it didn't work out too good in the he end. Went a little too far. You know, Hitler's just he. He wasn't really the best ta- choice. We, <laughs> but they helped bring the thing is this guy helped bring Hitler to power, and then then he couldn't control him anymore. So um, and then it goes into you know the the Nazi flying saucers. And um, I haven't seen, you know, there's pictures and things, you know, they got, I've got, I got three fun brand new books hey. that I <laughs> do more research. <laughs> when I got that text, are you on my Amazon account? Yeah. <laughs> Amazon says you're shopping. <laughs> that, it Amazon, rats you out Amazon every time. It's a tattletale. That's right. That's Doug all I got to say. Doug shopping again. So. Anyway, anonymous is eighty-five. There, this is how it kind of breaks down. The anonymous thing is eighty-five percent of the material that we're going to go through okay. is from anonymous. Thirteen percent came from another source, directly connected to the project. Which I don't know if we know this name either. Okay. So, two percent came from a ghost uh, who sent it by email and then immediately canceled the email account. Um, and they're not sure whether the pattern continues. Serpo dot org. I think it can be, it, nothing's been added to it since I think 2014, I'd have to look, mm-hmm. but it's been quite a while since, you know, anything else has been added to it. I'm yeah. not sure why, you know, and I think, you know, another thing, you know, begs the question, well, if this is such, you know, secret information mm-hmm. and there's such a worry about the government having us find out about what's been going on. You know, why doesn't government take it down? Right. You know, government can take down any website, mm-hmm. take down ours, whatever. Yeah. So if we don't see you next week, you know what happened. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we went too far. <laughs> yeah, we Dev and I went too far. But, you know, there's, uh, and this is something that was discussed in the uh, MUFON meeting. Uh, so something that was brought up is that if there's a feeling that um, the information that's being released to the public is being released incrementally. Mm-hmm. So because we're worried of a panic, right. um, again, the other rabbit hole, but it kind of, you know, relates is that the, the 
um, you know, the public's not going to be able to handle it. I mean, you know, you remember Contact. Mm -hmm. Remember Gary, the Gary Busey character, yeah. the religious fanatic. I mean, there's a concern out there that there's going to be a lot. If we figure out that it isn't all us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Then, then. That yeah, they're going to think... Everybody's going to react differently. You know, and we may have some of <laughs> that type of uh, reaction to mm -hmm. the situation. Of course you know? there will be. There's people that panic over everything. I mean, if if it be, you know, what would you think if it finally definitively gets released and you know now that we have extraterrestrials and flying saucer flying or how would you how would you feel I would about just feel it if they've always been here then i wouldn't panic if all of a sudden they appeared yes but if somebody said they've been here since you were a child yeah. or before you were born I'm like okay well so have a lot of things that could kill me so i'm assuming that it's going to be status quo i don't think i would panic unless it was oh my god this has never happened before aliens you know like what happens in a movie where all of a sudden they're here and they're, Day. yeah, they're, they're landing and taking out, you know, taking out the population. I mean, that's, but to find out they've always been here. Yeah. No, I think that, that I would be fine with. I was kind of was, what, what do you think? Okay. The, that being said, what do you think about what's going on today? I mean, you, you have, uh, fortunately or unfortunately <laughs> get to watch the same stuff I do. What do you think's happening now? Do you have any feeling about it? About what you mean, like the, the stuff, UFO sightings? The let's stuff, say, yeah, stuff that's out there. It just seems like everybody who sees one's a weirdo. <laughs> I don't. So I've always been doubtful. Mufon, I'm sorry about that comment. <laughs> I, <laughs> there are people that have I, seen, there are witnesses out there. It just you know everybody you see on TV that sees an alien, you know, it's just yeah. So I don't know. I've always, but I'm I'm one of those. If I don't see it myself, I don't believe it. So. Yeah, that's that's just my nature. Yeah, I don't believe in a lot that I can't see and touch and and know for a fact. Well, that's a lot of people, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know. But you know, but there's a lot in the world that you can't explain, so you definitely can't yeah. say you know everything definitively. So there's people that see a lot of things that other people don't see. You know, know. that doesn't necessarily well, doesn't people, necessarily make them weird. Some people a lot are much more perceptive than others. Yeah. I think in, a UFO could probably fly over my head and I'd be too busy looking at my phone or yelling at my dog to know that it was yeah, there. I spent a lot of time looking in the sky. Because I don't, the people that say they feel ghosts and things like that, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm kind of oblivious to the supernatural. You don't wonder. You don't wonder. I don't, no. You don't have that sense of wonder. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm just very matter of fact, very boring. That's me. Okay, well, I was just kind of wondering, because I always explain that when people, uh, they don't ask me, but I always offer it up. I said, my wife does not care. I said, your wife does not care about this, this topic. Yeah. Yeah. Not, it's interesting, but it's not, not a passion of mine. Well, you're getting an education today. I know. So now you know. I've lived with you long enough. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of lessons. This is not my first lesson. I'm going to grind you down. You'd be a believer. Really? Well, I'm not a fanatical believer. I'm not a, uh, I'm not fanatical about the subject. I'm um, severely interested, I think you'd say. That's why I enjoy the MUFON meeting because it's, uh, you know, you have different people, um, you know, talking about people have had sightings. People have had sightings and can't talk about it. Um, for various reasons, been in the military and things like that. So it's too bad. I mean, I, you, you should be able to at least talk about it, maybe not in a public forum, but maybe on a one-on-one, -on -one, you know. I'd love to get those people in here and, you know, uh, have a chat with them, but I don't think mm -hmm. they want to go public with it. Either. Maybe they have pensions. Like that's, <laughs> that's usually the thing. I mean, yeah. you know. So... Anyway, so that's where it's coming from. So there was a de declassified transcript of a meeting with then President Reagan about Roswell on March 6, 1981. Oh, I was getting ready to graduate high school. Yeah, look at that. I know you were in the Reagan era, huh? Yeah. Others present at the briefing were William K. These are familiar names to me. William Casey, the CIA director at the time, and three advisors as well as a female CIA transcriber. Oh, sure. 
you know. She gets to transcribe. That's nice. You, she just remember she's not yeah. she's forgotten about it right after she does it. Right. That's right. Secretary of Defense Casper Weinberger and presidential staffer Michael Deaver. They were president at the beginning, but he was president at the beginning, but he bowed out for some reason. I don't know. Hmm. Couldn't take it. There's the care. They mentioned the, I'm only, this thing's pretty long, so I'm only going to take a portion of it that's, um, okay. you know, that they declassified um, through the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, the caretaker is says, Mr. President, EBE, an EBE is a extra, it, it's, that term is extraterrestrial biological entity. It stayed alive until 1952, and that's when it died. We learned a great deal from the EBE, although EBE did not have voice organs like humans. Although it didn't have voice organs like humans, it was housed. It was housed in a special area at Los Alamos in Sandia Base, um, New Mexico. Although many different military doctors, scientists, and a select number of civilians studied the EBE, it never became upset or angry. EBE helped us learn from all the items found in the two crash sites. The EBE showed us how some of the items work, such as communications device. It also showed us how various other devices were able to communicate with an operation performed um, with an operation performed by military doctors. The EB was extremely intelligent. It learned English quickly, mainly by listening to the military personnel who were responsible for the EB safety and care. So what do you think? Interesting. So it couldn't communicate. Roll up a little bit. Okay. So it it didn't have any voice. You want to go? Uh, yeah. Okay. Right there. So it it didn't have a voice, but it was able to somehow. Help yeah. They us. they tell. It was. I mean, pointing and. It. They eventually. There's more. A little more to the story here, mm -hmm. and I don't think they put it in. They obviously, because things have been long dead, mm -hmm. they were able to surgically, maybe not surgically, but use kind of like the because uh, uh, okay. it didn't have, you know, a person who's lost their voice right. or has a tracheotomy. Or tracheotomy. Right. Yeah. Uh, he may have used something like that. And he was, a, they, they don't mention that here, but I know the whole story. I know okay. more to the story. So it was, but it didn't sound exactly like a human, but it was enough where we could communicate with okay. it. Now, what this is going into as we um, <coughs> kind of stroll into part two, I mean, knowing that this is pretty much fact, this is mm -hmm. a FOIA like document. Ten, we had it for 10 years, wasn't it? 42? Uh, 52, stayed alive until 49 to 50, 47 to 52. Oh, okay, so it didn't live that long. That's a long Five time years. in captivity. It had a handler. Uh -huh. So I know more of the story. So, yeah. you know, we can kind of discuss it a little bit. He had a handler. It was, um, you know, he was an officer and he would take, you know, he actually lived with him. Okay. They lived together. They were pals. Okay. They lived together. Um, the EB is from Serpo. So going on to, as we progress into part two, what happened is as they developed, and we'll go over this more um, in the next episode, but... Um, they learned, they finally, well, they didn't finally, they were able to get enough of the equipment to communicate with the planet. Okay. So um, it's a nine-month trip to go to Serpo. And these people did not so, come back, correct? They did come back. They did come back, okay. I mean, we can we can talk about it. it um, they, they went, the 12 people, we're not going to mention the gender because now right. we don't really know exactly. Uh, they were there. Um, I believe one was lost. Something he had a virus on the way. Something happened. Okay. He caught something, so we lost one immediately. I think, I and mean, we can we'll clarify that as we go forward. Ultimately, eight. I believe eight. Um, you know, because they Serpo has it's a bi Zeta Reticuli is a binary star system. It has two stars, mm -hmm. so or two suns. Excuse me. Um, so there's a lot of sunlight and radiation related things that we're not used to. Mm -hmm. So, um, eight came back, it actually arrived back after the 13 years 
and then you know they died they didn't live a full life they died of various things related to i believe cancer because of what they were exposed to but they were debriefed over a course of several months um it's it's important to point out that when they left they stripped them of their basically stripped them of their identity right. they gave them numbers they erased them yeah so to speak so you know um they erased you know they didn't have i'm assuming and they didn't go into this no relatives mm-hmm. you know what i mean right. they had parents right well i mean they could have told every you know there could have been a whole story about how, you know, their relatives thinking they were dead or... Well, it was during the Vietnam War. Okay. So, I believe. So, okay. one of the stories is that, um, you know, one of the stories is that, you know, they just died. You know, they were they died in the war. Right. You know. So, their parents or their, so their that families are, just had no idea what... We still don't. Were. Yeah. Okay. We still don't know okay. pretty much anything about... They came back and uh, they didn't come. F- I don't believe they may have come forward and talked. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I have, I'm, there's a lot of information on, on okay. uh, serpo.org to wade through. There's um, comments by Richard Doty, who's like my new favorite, <laughs> new favorite, you know, government guy. I want to talk to that guy, you know, about mm-hmm. Serpo. There's a lot of, he talks about, he does interviews, um, and uh, he doesn't talk about Serpo. So I wanted mm-hmm. to, I said, okay, so you you were here in Serpo.org. Did you, yeah. it, it, it indicated that you have had something to do with this. Did you, or did you, know, did, did you, did you not, can you not say? There's certain things he won't talk about. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's uh, one of those things. So, um this is the part one of the journey. Okay. So we're going to leave it with kind of a teaser. This is, you know, of the. We've got much more to talk it's about. Like 44 more episodes. No, it probably wait. won't take 44 more episodes to go through it. But um, it'll, we'll, again, we'll talk about the journey. Um, we Not the selection process because they don't talk about it. Okay. The journey uh, while they're on the, put, what they do when they're on the planet, um, the animals that are on the planet. Cool. They talk about that. You'll find that fun. Okay. And, um, you know, we will let it go with that. All right. So Deb and I will continue to follow the details that transpired over the 13-year journey. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of the Alien Probe Podcast. We welcome comments, questions, or requests to alienprobepodcast at gmail.com. Visit on Facebook. Check out our website at alienprobe.net. Twitter and Instagram at alienprobepod. Like and subscribe to our YouTube. Bring up Alien Pro Podcast, and you'll bring it right up the top. You'll see Doug Anthony right there. Click on that. Check out our over 200 episodes. Thanks again, Robert Anthony, our senior producer. Deb, thanks for joining me again. We look forward to many more episodes of Serpo. I I have so much to learn. Watch the skies. (laughs)